Hi, it's Dr. Greg Jantz. As a counselor, one of the things that is so, so painful that we walk folks through is that of betrayal. Next here on Hope and Possibility. Dr. Gregory Jans is a best-selling author of over 45 books and the founder of the Center A Place of Hope, voted a top 10 center for depression treatment in the U.S. As the pioneer of whole person care, Dr. Jans is known as the messenger of hope. Now the nation's expert on anxiety, depression, substance abuse, relationships, trauma, and PTSD, here is Dr. Gregory Jantz. It happens and it's devastating. It, it, it pushes you into the depths of despair. The word is betrayal. Oh, just that word brings up all kinds of emotions. Betrayal causes you to feel this pit in your stomach. Sometimes there's a blood flow that gets changed in the brain. The prefrontal cortex, instead of all the blood flow, goes to back to the primitive part of the brain, the amygdala, and you feel like fighting or flighting or running, and the wind is knocked out of you. Betrayal has a huge ripple effect. It'll affect digestion. It'll affect sleep. It will affect your ability to trust others. Betrayal. Now, it comes in many forms. Now, the first form you think about, you think of betrayal. And as we look at defining betrayal, uh, betrayal, you know, there are emotions with betrayal that are hard to describe, but you know exactly what I'm talking about if you had this experience. There's broken trust. Trust That broken trust will also lead you down a path. And I wrote down in my notes of despair. You will feel like life's not worth living. You will feel the sense of despondency. Betrayal takes you down to a road where you can immediately feel very jealous. Jealous, and you might want to attack. Jealous, you feel like maybe I, I feel like I'm going to harm somebody else. Betrayal and jealousy oftentimes goes hand in hand. You can feel very ashamed. As you think about being ashamed, uh, you can feel like, okay, well, it's probably my fault if I would have only, if I would have only. That's what betrayal can do. It causes you to potentially become a victim because you start thinking the way a victim would think. Betrayal makes you feel unworthy. Betrayal causes you to feel like nobody else could possibly love me. In one word, you're traumatized. You're traumatized and it shakes the very foundation. Uh, it could f shake the foundation of your faith. Maybe you have a strong faith in God and suddenly that's shaken because you go, how could, how could God ever allow this to happen? I don't get it. And you can feel very unlovable. I put together because of really the number of folks that I see walking through, suffering from, and dealing with betrayal. I put together a little book called Building, look at this, I got it all marked up, Building Trust After Betrayal. And yes, that's a key, but how do you, how do you get there? And in my notes today, I, betrayal shatters trust and respect for another person and for you. But remember, betrayal can come I mean, it's an earthquake. It is an absolute earthquake. But it can come in various different forms. There could be betrayal in the workplace. There can be somebody that uh, lied or gaslighted you and caused you to feel um, uh, you were looked over for a promotion. Others begin to treat you poorly uh, because there could be um, gossip and behind the scenes uh, office talk and you have been in, betrayed in the workplace. We usually think in terms of a trusted, like in a marriage, a trusted relationship, where there's been a sense of severe broken trust. Severe. So as we pause and just look, okay, it is, it's, it's painful. It's painful beyond imagination. And I want to share a few notations here uh, from my, you know, You'll see that I've got my pages marked. But betrayal uh, cannot be solved in 100 pages. Betrayal has to be solved 
in a healing of the heart. But sometimes we need to recognize, oh yeah, I've been traumatized, here's what it's done to me. And sometimes um, a person can be betrayed in ways that you didn't first think of. A person that's um, had a secret gambling problem, and maybe it's in a marriage, and they did a lot of things behind your back, lost a lot of money. That'd be a sense of betrayal. A person that is on the receiving end of a lot of abuse, whether it be spiritual abuse, physical abuse, emotional abuse, that's betrayal. Um, there can be, and I'm going to step into the online world for a minute, the betrayal in the online world where um, you can um, choose at times even fake friends or online quote friends instead of having real relationships. You betray the real relationships because it's easier to have a relationship online with an anonymous, non-intimate friend. That could be betrayal. Uh, a person who has practiced in your life persistent and ongoing lying. Lying and deception. Now, by the way, we all make mistakes, and when we do, we want to correct them. A healthy person seeks forgiveness. But here we go. Uh, persistent and lying deception. Boy, that can come in many different forms. Uh, deception is withholding information, withholding truth, distorting truth. It's all ultimately a lie. Um, the person also that um, the use of pornography. I need to mention this one because a person who escapes into pornography at the core, at the very core, they're betraying ultimately themselves, but they're betraying uh, a relationship. Okay. And anytime we hide this, it's betrayal, and it leads us down also another path that uh, I've never, ever, ever met a person who said, I'm really glad that I got addicted to pornography. It was a really, really great thing to do. I see pain. I see regret. I see remorse. I see broken relationships. There is no good outcome. And that's what happens with betrayal. Betrayal can be done in secret or openly. Person that comes to you and says, I don't love you anymore. It's over. What a, and you thought things were going pretty good. What a sense of betrayal. The person that comes along in your life and built a whole foundation uh, in a relationship that was all built on lies. And later you find out. The person that developed a secret addiction. And maybe it was to prescription drugs, alcohol, the digital world, pornography, a secret addiction. And then you find out. This is why I say the pain and the despair that it, this can create. Because we, we, we tend to want to blame ourselves. All right. Now, why does a person do this? Well, they could have a lot of unmet emotional needs and they are hurt, traumatize themselves, and they're acting it out. They're re-traumatizing other people. Um, betrayal, I can try to get... Um, needs met in an illegitimate way, and even if it's emotional needs, uh, physical, sexual, I, I can also develop a sense, if it's a narcissistic personality, sense of power, a sense of control. And so as we look at this, we go, okay, there are reasons that I look at, I can understand how a person would end up in a pattern of betrayal, um, but it doesn't ever excuse it. There could be unhealthy patterns that developed in childhood, unhealthy wounds from childhood, and a person is just recycling these wounds. Um, a person that deals with a lot of shame, I'm defective. Well, I can feel powerful in the process of betraying another person. I can feel a false sense of being wanted or desired that really backfires, backfires big time. I want to mention one other reason. There's more. But a personality disorder. A person that has a true personality disorder where they don't feel remorse. Um, they don't get it. It doesn't matter. They don't have empathy. 
Uh, they don't have a sense of true connection with another human being, can't be intimate, and that that does happen as well. The personality disorders, let me just say, a narcissistic personality would be one of those. That doesn't happen all the time. I mean, that's not the main reason for betrayal, but we need to mention it because it does happen enough. If you've been betrayed, first there's the not there's the shock, and then there's and that's the despair. It's a shock. It's the every emotion you can imagine. But then there's also the denial. What's that look like? Um, the denial. Well, I'm going to try to pretend this really didn't happen. It's too painful. No, they really didn't do that. There's no way they would do this to me. There's some kind of mistake here. And there's really that denial. These are really the stages of, of, of grief as well that were created years ago. Uh, anger. I, I mentioned anger. Anger is one that is important to look at because betrayal, we, we go between anger and rage, anger and rage, despair, depression, walking around with constant anxiety, and that is a, a normal stage. And then there's, uh, like in grief, there's the bargaining. You're trying to, okay, okay, if I only do this, they'll be happy. Um, if I only do this, this will never happen again. And there's just an odd bargaining we try to do in our mind. And then finally, there's the depression. And it can be really a deep, deep depression after you really feel the full effects of that uh, betrayal. And we also have, finally, where we need to get to, there's an acceptance of the wrong that's been done, acceptance of the pain that's happened, and acceptance that this was traumatic, but it's not going to define me. And those are that's just important to get to. Um, how do you how do you recover from this? I make a couple notations related to this that are important. Uh, betrayal again with the pain, but the person that did the betraying, once it's all out, do they minimize it, deny it, um, distort it, uh, or are they taking full absolute? responsibility and they're willing to do whatever they have to do for however long they have to do um, and they are getting help for themselves see that paints a bit of a different picture you, know, you got to make sure that they're really sincere and they're going to follow through and time will show on that um is there been a whilst do they do it well has there been a pattern of uh, addiction a pattern of other behaviors in their life? Do you see life patterns that are quite destructive? And the other piece that we've got to look at is, did they ever sincerely ask for forgiveness, admit their incredible wrongdoing, be humbled by it, willing to do anything, and they're actually seeking forgiveness and, and, and allowing the process of that? And of course, you have to ask, the, do I ever, can I ever trust this person again? I'll tell you in the center place of hope, and we've dealt with marriages where there's been betrayal, there's been um, deep wounds and, and a total rebuilding of trust. Do, do we get to a point where we trust the person again? Yeah, you sure can. Don't do it too fast, okay? And there is a redemptive healing that I feel that uh, when true forgiveness is there and there's a seeking of forgiveness, and time has passed, and there's a, a rebuilding and a restoration stage in one's life, and they may you may see significant change in, in their faith, in how they treat other people, in their transparency, how, how they remain remain humble. So, but that indeed is not instant. So, all right. A few thoughts today around betrayal. I do want to mention, I don't mean to sound e simple or, or overly easy, but we have to, no matter what, if you're betrayed by somebody, there's got to be forgiveness so that you can heal. And I don't mean excuse. I don't mean that we just go, okay, this, uh, you know, carry it lightly and not that at all. What we're talking about is I am no longer going to torture myself by what another person did. I am going to believe the promises that we have on forgiveness. I've seen other people do it. 
I know it can be done, and I'm going to ask God's help to do this. So it's got to be that kind of approach. There are trigger points. There's things that can come up that can re kind of reignite that pain. And it's not a one-time decision, but you're going to be walking through this over time. That's the number one number one factor that we have to do uh, in order to have recovery. Not brushing over that lightly. There's other things we have to do. We have to, how do I learn what is a trusting person? How do I relearn how to trust others? How do I protect myself and not allow this to be a toxic poison? How do I manage anger, fear, guilt, shame in my life? So it's a chance for us to um, have healing and renewal in our own life and adjust some things in our life. So we have to become stronger and have hope for the future. And if we address it, the pain is there, but if we address it, we can put ourselves in a different trajectory for a different future. And that's what we believe is true. Rebuilding trust after betrayal.